Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the next lesson on how to create a multiplayer game using the Photon 2 plugin in Unity. In this lesson, we're going to show you how to spawn a player avatar or a character that your player can control across the network. So let's get started. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. All right, so here we have our project open inside of Unity and the first thing I'm going to do is build our project so that we can review what we've done so far and talk about the next steps that we want to take. So I'm gonna hit Control B. All right, once our project is finished building, I'm gonna hit play in the standalone and I'm gonna hit play in Unity. I'm then going to click battle, which will load us into the multiplayer scene and it'll instantiate a photon network player game object for the local player. So this game object is owned by the Unity editor. And now I'm going to go over to our standalone and I'm going to click battle and it'll do the same thing. And so you can see now we have two photon network player game objects. One is owned by the player using the editor and the other is owned by the player using the standalone executable. Now the thing with these Photon Network Player game objects is that at the moment these are the only game objects that are actually owned by specific players. And so it's important that we maintain these game objects throughout the duration of our multiplayer game. And it's only when a player disconnects from the multiplayer game that we should delete these game objects. And so these are going to be disconnected from the actual characters or avatars that our players are controlling because what happens if our character dies or we need to respawn it? If this game object is the same as our avatar or character game object, then we will be destroying the only game object that we have that is associated with our player. And so the best thing that we can do for these game objects is just remove all the visual components that are attached to them. And so I'm going to stop our game from playing and I'm going to close our standalone version and then I'm going to go over to our resource folder and find our photon network player game object. I'm then going to remove the cube mesh filter and I'm going to remove the mesh renderer component. Now what we need to do is create a new script that will instantiate a separate game object across the network for our player which will be our player's avatar. And so I'm going to go to our Photon folder, which is within our Scripts folder. And I'm actually going to right click and go to Create Folder. And I'm going to name this one Game Controllers. Within this folder, I'm going to right click, go to Create, and then C Sharp Script. And this one we're going to name Photon Player. I'm then going to double click on this to open it up in Visual Studios. So the first thing that we need to do within this script is create a few variables. And the first one is going to be a private photon view. And it's not recognized, so we need to click on it, hold alt enter, and then select using photon.pun. And this one I'm just gonna call PV. And then within the start function, let's go ahead and initialize our photon view. So I'm gonna type PV equals get component, and then we're gonna pass in photon view parentheses, semicolon. Now before we move forward with instantiating the player's avatar across the network, we need to set up some spawn points. So I'm gonna go back to Unity and we're going to create a new c -sharp script. And this one is going to be called our game, game setup. Let's go ahead and open this up in Visual Studios. Within this script, we need to set up a singleton of this script. And so I'm going to type public static game setup. We'll call this GS. And then we need to have a public transform variable. And this is going to be a, an array and we'll call it spawn points. We can then delete our start and update functions. And we're going to create a void on enable function. And within here, we're going to just call if game setup dot gs equals null then we want to save in this script as that value so i'm going to say game setup dot gs equals this now let's go ahead and save this script we can go back to unity now within unity we're going to navigate over to our multiplayer scene so i'm going to open up our scenes folder and double click on multiplayer Within this scene, I'm going to right click, go to create empty, and we're going to rename this to game setup. 
and then we're going to attach our game setup script to this game object. We then need to set up some transforms for our spawn point. So I'm going to right click within our hierarchy, go to create empty, and we don't want it to be a child. And I'm going to rename this to spawn point and then one. And then I'm going to duplicate this game object. Okay, and we can also give it a, a visual icon within our hierarchy. I'm then going to reposition these spawn points to 0, 0, and I'm going to select the second one, and I'm going to move it up by positive 5. I'm then going to grab our main camera and move it up in the y direction by 2.5, so it's right in the middle of our two spawn points. We then need to select our game setup game object and save these spawn points within our spawn points array. So I'm going to make this array of size 2 and I'm going to grab the first one, put it in element 0, and the second one in element 1. Now we can go back to our photon player script. Now there's a number of ways to go about spawning the player avatars within the scene and a lot of it depends on what type of game you're creating. If you have a team based game then you're going to want to have bases to spawn each player's avatar in. Or if it's a free for all type game then it could be round robin or random. But for the sake of this tutorial we're not going to get into all the different ways that you can spawn players into a scene. Instead we're just going to go with the easiest and that is having a random spawn. Now there's a number of ways that you can go about doing a random spawn. You can use random position values that you enter into the instantiate function, or you can do what we're doing and have set transforms that you just randomly pick from. Now we can go ahead and instantiate our player's avatar across the network, but we first want to check to make sure that we're only doing this for the local player. And so I'm going to type if pv.isMine if that's true, then we can go ahead and instantiate. So I'm going to say photon network instantiate. And here we can then pass in the file location and the file name. So I'm going to type path, which is not recognized. So I'm going to click on it, type alt enter, and then select using system.io. And then we need to say dot combined. And we're going to pass in the file path, which is going to be this photon prefab. So I'm going to copy that, go back and paste it in between the quotes. Then I'm going to say comma and here is going to be the file name. And so this is going to be, let's say player, player avatar quotes. And then outside these parentheses, we need to pass in the position. And so this position is going to be game setup dot gs dot spawn points. And then in square brackets, we're going to pass in the spawn picker and we're going to say dot position. And then we're going to say game setup dot gs dot spawn point square brackets spawn picker close the square brackets dot rotation. And then for data, we're just going to pass in zero. I can also hit an enter right here to put it onto a second line so we don't have to scroll over to the right. Make sure I leave it with a semicolon. Now the last thing I'm going to do is create a variable that we can then save this game object into. So I'm going to type public game object and we're going to call this my avatar. And then in front of our instantiate function, I'm going to type my avatar equals and then the photon network dot instantiate. Let's go ahead and save this script and go back to Unity. Once we're back in Unity, the first thing I'm going to do is select our photon network player prefab and I'm going to attach our photon player script. So I'm going to go to our scripts photon game controllers folder and I'm going to click on our photon player script and drag it into the inspector. Now we don't need to set the my avatar variable because that will be set when we instantiate our avatar. But let's go ahead and create that avatar. So within our hierarchy, I'm going to go to create 3D object. I'm going to select capsule and then we can rename this game object to be player avatar. And then what we need to do is add a photon view to this game object. So I'm going to click on the add component drop down menu and select photon view. And then what we can do is we can select this game object and drag it into our resource 
photon prefabs folder. And we can delete it from our hierarchy. I'm then going to hit control B to build our project. Once our project is finished building, I'm going to hit play in the standalone and play in the editor. I'm then going to click battle in our game scene and that can then load us into our multiplayer scene and here you can see that it has instantiated our player avatar into the scene. I'm then going to go to our standalone scene and I'm going to click battle and here you can see that luckily it instantiated our second player avatar into the other spawn point location so they're not right on top of each other. Now let's go and have a look at our hierarchy. So first off we have our game setup game object and our two spawn points and then we have our first photon network player game object and this one is owned by player one and then we have our first player avatar game object and this is also owned by player one and then we have our second photon network player game object which is owned by player two and we have our second player avatar which is owned by player two now it looks like we were able to get everything working just fine. We were able to instantiate a separate game object across the network, which will be for the player's avatar. And this is a separate game object from the photon network player game object, which is more for maintaining a connection to the game and also holding player information. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this video on how to create a multiplayer game using the Photon 2 plugin in Unity. In the next lesson, we'll be talking about player movement and synchronizing the player movement across the network. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful. If you did so, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.